Welcome back to Awakening TV. I'm heart expert and the author of the book, Awakening to Your Story, Alicia Hartzell. We are here today on our final episode of season one. That's 24 episodes, 24 times we've been in your inbox, bringing you some delicious information and content that is designed to help and support you along your journey. Now, for our second season, which is right around the corner, we have some really neat things that we're working on. We've got a whole new platform that we are designing just for you for season two. Now, in designing that platform, we've taken some of the information that we've gotten from you over the last 24 weeks, and we are making something that is pinpointed and directed to your needs, to what it is you've been asking for. Now, on that path towards figuring out what season two is going to look like, we have come across a question that I want to make sure we answer in our last episode of this season. It has to do with mantras. So let's dig into the question. Uh, when you use the word mantra, I'm a little confused about what it is. Is it part of a religion? I don't want to participate in other religions outside of my own, so I hesitate when I hear you say it. I really like your ideas and approaches to looking at my story, so I don't want to toss the baby out with the bathwater. Do you think that you could explain? Absolutely, I can explain. And not only can I explain, but I want to really empower you to um, utilize everything that I bring you know, bring to your inbox everything that I bring to your story as your own, which means you can um, take out things that don't fit you and add in things that do. I hope on your journey, I'm not the only person that you're gathering information from. There are so many experts out there that are ready and willing to help really support you along your path. And all of us have very unique expressions of love and truth and life to bring to the table of humanity. Now, to be really honest, I had to actually go in and look at the definition because I wanted to make sure that I was giving you the correct information. For me, when I say mantra, I think of the language that I'm using and the truth that I'm holding and I'm using it to calm my mind, to, um, to cast out all the noise and to create ownership for truth. You know, we boil down so much information and try to quiet voices in our heads so that we can get to our back to our essential truth. And those I am statements, those mantras that I ask you to identify and then hold on to as you create ownership, that is what Awakening to Your Stories version of mantra is. That is what Alicia Hartzell's version of mantra is. But I wanted to kind of go and dig in and give you some more, um, more information around what mantra looks like out in the rest of the table of humanity. Understanding that you get to make it your own. Now, Awakening to Your Story, the way we do it, it is not, we have no religion specific um, in anything that we do. Everything is about your story, your connection to divine, whatever that looks like. It's very generic and very human, divine, whatever that looks like for you, that is yours. My job isn't to help you figure out that part of your path, it's to figure out your relationship with your heart. And that can take the form of many different kinds of dialogues. And religion is one of those internal dialogues that you can always incorporate into that story, right? So as we're looking at mantra at the grander table of humanity, um, one of the definitions that I found was an often repeated word, formula, or phrase, often a truism. Now, I love this. Truism is a kind of a new word for me. It's not one that I have in my everyday vocabulary or vernacular, but I love it and I may kind of adopt it. So a tru truism is something that is true that you have ownership for. I mean, hello, this is what we talk about every week, right? So in, by definition, it is a word or formula or phrase that is aligned with a truism, right? 
Now in Sanskrit, which came up a lot when I was searching, it is a thought behind a speech or an action, right? So anything that has um, speech or action and thought, that is your mantra, right? Now the Chopra Center um, has it kind of broken down into the two syllables. So man, which is the mind, and tra, which is to transport. And it is an instrument of the mind and intention, right? So when he uses mantra, it is about an instrument of the mind and intention. Now again, awakening to your story and the way that we use it, it is a place for the mind to become still around a truth while you're creating ownership for that truth, right? Now, I always like to give you three actionables and I wouldn't want to leave you high and dry on our last episode. So we are going to have three actionables about using mantra. So at heart actionable and number one, figure out what mantra means for you. That's right. So whether or not you have a specific religion that you are in alignment with or whether or not you have no religion that you uh, don't have a belief system that you plug into, you can still create ownership for your truth if you know what a mantra means for you. You can use it as a tool. A mantra can still be a tool for creating ownership for your truth. So. The first and foremost thing you got to do is figure out what it means to you. And this can be a private thing. You don't have to broadcast it over social media or to anyone else. This is about you and your story and the way that you're writing it and how you're creating ownership in that very intimate space, right? When you close your eyes at night, it's just you and whatever it is that you're connected to within that space. So it can be anything that you want it to be, but you have to create ownership for it. You gotta know what it is, right? Hard actionable and number two, find your truth. So when using a mantra, find your truth. Make it as simple as possible. Um, there are times when a long mantra is good, but I have found personally that if you can boil it down as far as it can go, you're more likely to be able to grab onto it when you need it. You know, when you get into those tricky situations, you can go, oh wait, no, I am this. I am mantras um, are so important um, in the way that we look at things in Awakening to Your Story and in the way that I look at my life and the way that I deal with my personal information, which is how I end up bringing it to the table of humanity to you. So you've got to boil down your truth, know it, own it, hold it in your pocket, utilize it, right? And then the third and final hard actionable is use it actively and passively, right? So if your mantra is, I am strong, right? And you've, you've created an ownership for what that means to you, what that, what that looks like for you, what that truth is embodied in you and how that feels, right? You can actively use, use it and you can passively use it. So when you're actively using it, when you're on um, the precipice and you are faced with a limiting belief of, oh, I'm not enough and I'm weak, you can actively choose. No, I am strong. That is my truth. I am strong, right? That is active, right? You can get into a quiet space, whether you're looking into a body of water or out into a hill or you have five seconds in your car by yourself. You can listen to music, whatever it is to get yourself into a place of stillness. Hold that mantra in your mind's eye. You can even whisper it off of your lips. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. You can change your inflection, right? Own it, own it, own it. Those are all active ways of owning it. Now, passive ways of owning it are, are so easy and so amazing. On your phone, just set up a, uh, a reminder or a, a thing that repeats on your calendar that says at 11 o'clock, it says, I am strong, and it dings, and you can even use emojis, and it's, I am strong. And all of a sudden, at 12 o'clock, you're like, what is that? And it's like, oh yeah, that's a passive reminder of my truth, right? Write it on your mirror. 
um, I am strong. Keep it on your visor in your car or um, get a piece of jewelry that says it, right? All those are passive ways of owning your mantra. There are so many beautiful products out there now, whether it's jewelry or clothing. I mean, there's there's yoga clothes out there that actually have mantras on them. It's, it's phenomenal. You can always tap back into your truth, whether it be passive or active. So let's go over our three hard actionables one more time. Uh, the first one is figure out what it means to you. Second, find your truth. And third, own that truth passively and actively. So this is what you do when you're using a mantra. All three of these things will deepen your understanding, help get you quiet, and help you create ownership for all that you are. Now, um, I am very sad that this is the last episode, but I am also very excited for the next 25 episodes to come. I cannot wait to bring them to you. I am thrilled to be able to present something to you that you guys have asked for. And I want you to know that as we go into this next season, no matter what it is that you're doing in your life, no matter where it is that you find yourself, know that you are valuable. Know that life is working for you, never against you. That you have everything that you need along the way. Now, if you need more support from me or inspiration or teachings, you can always go to Awakening to Your Story. There are always one-on-one -on -one sessions available for you and tons of content just waiting for you to jump into. I cannot wait to see you in the next 25 episodes, but until then, know that you are held in a place of the most intense and wonderful unconditional love. For more support, information, and inspiration, join me at AwakeningToYourStory.com.